No. It's completely optional. It's completely optional. Yeah. My suggestion is the problems I'm going to give you today and the problems I'm going to post today, right after this class, will be available. All this whole PowerPoint will be available to you, which is highly recommended. I kind of broke it down simply to what you guys should know for each part of the test. Of the test before that, you're going to have to be able to simplify out exponential fractions, um, being able to do like square root of 56 plus square root of 25. Can you give me into a simple, simplified fraction? Um, and just everything that's on here is open game. There's a lot that covers in 1.5 to 1.10. I think that's why they split this whole chapter up into two different, two different parts. Um, but if you kind of have the basics of understanding what this is about, you should be fine. So here we go. What I would recommend is you copy down these. I kind of, this is one of 14 problems plus about another five of them after this. So if I can get to 14, the rest of it, the review will be posted on School Loop. I'll send you an email today. It'll be all posted again with you. The video of this will be posted uh, for you guys. Um, so I kind of did them in order 1.1. They're kind of color coordinated as well. So I try to make sure that the, I had them all kind of laid out for you guys. This is reviewing everything. This should be reviewing everything. These are more of the simpler problems. Could you have a little bit more trickier? Uh, yeah, but it's, it follows the same kind of thing, right? Pre-calculus is all pattern. So if you can get the patterns, you're good. Okay. Quadratic equations, solving quadratic by factoring. We definitely have factoring problems on here where you've got to be able to factor. You've got to know how to factor. You've got to be able to solve out. The 1.5 section was really dealing with solving equations. So you want to be able to look at these and solve them correctly. Okay. And not just simplify and just give me the factors. I'm looking for X values. Um, on the team test, on the test itself, it's going to give you boxes. It's going to tell you guys how to actually structure them and to plug every, all the values in. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, again, I kind of redid it so, to help you guys out a little bit. The first part of here that I want to be able to do is bring over all my values to the left-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over that 24 and set uh, the equation equal to zero. Oh, come on. Give me a second. Let me do this. Whatever I don't finish here will be posted in two videos. So the video that will be posted will consist of the problems we do here and the problems we are going to do um, that I couldn't finish today. So definitely recommend, you do not need to subscribe. Okay, I'm not gonna cry if you don't, okay? It's just for you guys. X squared plus five minus 24 is equal to zero. I'm gonna show more work than what I need to just to help those that need the extra help out. I'm gonna hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, the values here that I wanna be able to do is I gotta be able to factor this out completely. Using my factor tree, I'm gonna be given two numbers, negative 24 on top, which is A times C, five on the bottom. What multiplies to give you negative four but adds it to give you negative five, or adds it to five? positive eight, negative three. These become our two factors. Those factors are gonna give me X plus eight. And then X minus three is equal to zero. We are gonna use a zero product property where in fact, each product should be multiplied by zero. So as long as we can find a solution to that, we're gonna be okay. So we're gonna set this first one, X plus eight is equal to zero. So our first value is gonna give me negative eight. X minus three is equal to zero. Again, will be X is equal to three. These are our two solutions to our problem, or at least our quadratic. And that's how we want to be able to solve those out. That's all I need to see, okay? It is, comp it is partially wrong if you only put one of the solutions. You've got to be able to put both of them in, okay? They will give you whole numbers. They will give you whole numbers. So if you're looking at them, you're like, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, you probably are. You probably are. Should give you whole numbers. Yeah, you could. This is also acceptable. X is equal to negative eight, comma three. You can also put it as eight. I mean, doesn't matter as long as I see the two numbers there. Okay, here we go. Here's the next one. This is two of fourteen. Go ahead and copy down that one. Same section. We're now looking at solving a simple quadratic equation. 
Um, solving simple quadratics, we have to remember that whenever we're taking the square root of something, we're gonna have a plus and minus value. I'll reiterate that when we do that tomorrow and on the day of the test. Square root symbols with the plus or minus are very, very important. If you don't have that in, it's still considered partially wrong. So I wanna be able to make sure that you guys are getting that value in. First thing I want to be able to do here is I got to get rid of that squared term to get rid of that. What should I do? Square root. Square root symbol from here tells me when I take the square root to both sides, I want to be able to simplify out this left hand side that basically takes away my squares. And I'm going to get, remember, the plus or minus square root of five. Got to remember to put that in for this one. To simplify out for my x, I'm going to go ahead and add 4 to both sides. We cannot add these terms up as they are not like terms, but I'm going to get x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. This answer is acceptable. Another way you can also write this is as x is equal to 4 plus square root of 5 and x is equal to 4 minus square root of 5. That is what the plus or minus operator does, essentially. So we have two answers to our quadratic. Good. Here we go. So I want to try to get through as many possible problems as I can. Um, completing the square. This is definitely another one we got to be able to do. We have two examples, one more of a simpler type of problem, the other one will be a little bit more trickier, meaning we have to do simply take out a GCF for one of them before we simplify out. We should get used to them. But for those that are not, I definitely want to help out. Can we find two numbers, first of all, that can be multiplied to 13, but adds up to give you negative 8? The answer is no, because 13 is prime. Prime means that it's only divisible by itself and the number 1. So we can't do it by factor. Okay. The next thing we want to be able to do and look up here is be able to complete the square. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and bring over that 13 to the other side. So I'm going to subtract out 13 from both sides. I'm going to leave a space for the other term. Well, let's try this again. I don't even know what that was about. Completing the square term for this, I want to be able to take my negative 8, which is my b in, my t in this equation, take that divided by 2 and square it. Take that divided by 2, we're going to get negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. What we do to one side, we got to do to both sides. So plus 16 to one side, plus 16 to the other. And we want to be able to reduce out to get a completed squared. So it's going to get minus 4 squared is equal to 3. We're not done here because it's asking us to solve. So now this becomes a simple quadratic solving problem where we take the square root to both sides and simplify out. Taking the square root of this problem, we're going to go ahead and get x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Adding 4 to both sides, we're going to get x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of 3. I'm going to leave this as this one as we had the other example explaining the plus or minus symbol. I think we're okay to get that. I think a lot of you guys get that. So 
So this is the easier type, A is the easier type of problem because there's really not that much changing we gotta do. For the one to the right, the first thing I'm gonna do again is bring over the whole number to the other side to eliminate that on my right side. Um, yes. We can, but we're gonna do that afterwards. It's a little bit easier if you do it afterwards than do it before. If it's comfortable for you guys to do it, by all means, go ahead and do it. I think it looks a little bit easier this way. Yes. That's what she was saying. That's what she was saying. Okay. I'm going to bring it over to the other side because sometimes when you guys take out the three, it, you guys don't forget that you guys are still multiplying by that three to bring it to the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and just bring it over later. We're going to pull out the GCF in front. The GCF will be 3x squared minus 4x plus something is equal to negative 6. So we still want to be able to complete the square with this inside term. The inside term will happen to be what? Take this, divide it by 2 and square it. Pull out the GCF. Pull out the GCF. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. What am I actually adding to this side of the equation, though? 12. So if I'm adding 12 here, i got to add 12 to this other side as well. Okay. Again, we pulled up the GCF because we still have the 3 on the outside. If this was original, we didn't have this here, we didn't have the 3, we would just be adding 4 to both sides. But because we have a multiple of 3, we want to be really thinking about how we would redistribute this back in. So this would be 3 times 4, which would be 12. So it would be 12 that we're adding to both sides. We're going to go ahead and reduce down to get 3x minus 2 squared is equal to 6. Just taking some delays here. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to kind of simplify this one up because I think you guys can get it from here. Taking this divided by 3, we're going to get 2. Taking the square root of both sides, we're going to get x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And then our final step would be to write it as x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. That's our answer. Again, if you want to leave it like that, you're definitely more than welcome to. Good. Yes. If you take out the three, you just got to remember what you're actually adding into both sides of the equation. So I would suggest you just do it first. It's a little bit easier because if you do it in the beginning, that means you're going to have a two here. And then you have to think, okay, how do I get that to the other side by subtracting out negative 60? So just do it before. I think it's a little bit easier to do it before. If it makes sense to you, by all means, do it your way. I'm okay with that. You can definitely do that, but I would suggest you do it later. Here we go. Next type of problems we're going to see here, using the quadratic formula. Okay. What multiplies to give you negative 3 but adds it to give you negative 5, there's nothing. You can't factor it. There's no GCF. There's really nothing you can use for this. Uh, you will have a problem like this, so just kind of be aware of that. Looking at the quadratic formula, x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Yes, you do. Yeah, you guys should know, you guys should know the quadratic formula. You guys have to know the quadratic formula. This is what I'm giving you now, two days before your test, so you can practice and study it. Again, the problems that I've given you guys are going to be there. There's really not that much besides the discriminant that we're going to talk about, the quadratic formula that we're going to talk about. Um, solving equations are kind of straightforward for you guys. Um, and just operations, right? Just solving operations. Looking at our first one here, we want to be able to call out our variables. It helps you definitely do it. 
you not have to. You not have to. Looking at our first one here, I have my value of a is equal to three. My b is equal to negative five. We take the value, the, the sign in front of that term, negative one. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and plug it in. So I'm gonna get x is equal to negative b. So negative five plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative five squared. I would put parentheses around your terms, your uh, integers, to help you guys out. 4ac all over 2a. We're going to go and simplify this out. Yes. You can do six. That's fine. I'm going to get positive 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 12 all over 6. 5 is plus or minus the square root of 37 over 6. Do you need to reduce down? No, leave it. If I do give you multiple choice, this is how you're going to see it. I wonder. Okay. That's how I want you guys to see it. That is the quadratic equation. This brings us up to problem number five. Are we good? A lot of the stuff that you can do in your calculators, you guys will be able to use mine. You guys cannot use your cell phones at all. Okay, guys, so some kind of work. This is enough work for me where you're just plugging it in, doing a lot of the simplification in one step, and then reducing down to one step. You should be able to show that for me. I don't think that's that much to ask. Okay, here we go. Next type of problems that we're going to see here is the discriminant. Okay. Discriminant problem is something that's good to go over because we will see it again when we deal with quadratics and show how many solutions we have with problems. I don't know how much we're going to see of it, but I still want you guys to know what it is. The discriminant itself, when we're talking about distinct solutions, the discriminant comes from the quadratic equation, which is the inside, inside the square root symbol. So four um, B squared, sorry. This is B squared minus 4AC. This helps us determine whether we have one solution, two, or no real solution, or what they call imaginary. Anything under that's a square root that's a negative will be considered imaginary, but we're just talking about the discriminant, which is going to come up again. If d is greater than zero, this, uh, this, we have two. If d is equal to zero, we have exactly one. If d is less than, then we have none. Again, you can call out your variables between each one of these. The variables that you can call out between a, b, and c should take on the sign that's in front of it. Our first one, a, is going to be at one. B is going to be a positive 4, and C is going to be a negative 1. We have these values here. We're going to go ahead and plug them into the discriminant, which is D is equal to B squared. Again, parentheses around your integers, minus 4 times A times C. Want to be able to reduce down and find out how many values you have. This is 16. Negative 4 times 1 times a negative gives me positive 4, which gives me 20. So 20, there's nothing special about 20, but it's either positive, 0, or negative. It's positive in this case, so it is greater than 0. So how many solutions? 2. No, no. Nope, just asking you to tell me how many real how many real solutions are there. It would your answer 
would give you a multiple choice question that would say none, one, imaginary, or three, or something like that. You would just be able to tell me one, none, none. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying if you were to give one like that, I'm just hypothetically speaking. I don't know if you might. I don't know. Maybe. You could. You might not. But it's something good to remember. Something good to remember. We have our variables here. We're going to go ahead and plug into the discriminant, which is going to be my b squared, which is negative 12 squared, minus 4 times a times c. Did someone already do this one? 144 minus what? <laughs> is equal to zero. Zero tells me that a discriminant is equal to zero. So if it's equal to zero, how many solutions do I have? Yeah. Only one. Might be something good to remember. Just so. Okay, here we go, let's keep on moving on. Other types of equations. These are just the other types of equations we can solve involving fractional expressions, or in this case, radical expressions. We can still solve these out. Just get to go, just get to go over. My recommendation is that you kind of highlight the problems. You're like, oh man, I forgot how to do these. Okay, highlight those ones and go back and look at the ones that are in the, the first section that we did. Those are probably really good to go back over and do. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I possibly can today. I'll be in here after school for a little bit. Or no, I won't be. I have a meeting. I'm sorry. Um, tomorrow's a team test, so if you start doing a couple of those problems and you feel stuck, and Mr. Aguilar, can you hand me go over these couple of those? Let's do it. Cool with me. Cool with me. If there was one problem that is the bane of your existence, it's problems like these. It was a lot harder in the chest, and I changed them so they're more simpler. So they should be like this. Okay, this should be very similar to this. We got to be able to create a common denominator between the left hand side first because then we can cross multiply our values. When I'm looking at this one, our common denominator between these two things is going to be x times x plus 2. That is the common denominator between them. Whatever one part is missing from the other, that's what we want to be able to multiply by. So the left hand side, I need to multiply this by x plus 2. The right hand side, I got to multiply this side by x. That's what it's missing. If you need help, stack them and do them that way. It also comes out the same thing. If we use distributive property, we're going to get 3x plus 6 plus 5x is equal to 2 over 1. I'm writing that as a 2 over 1 so I can do the cross multiplication of it. Okay. We're going to simplify out. I'm going to get 8x plus 6 over x squared plus 2x. This leads me to do cross multiplication with each of my terms. This will give me 2x squared plus 4x is equal to 8x plus 6 I'm going to kind of solve this over here give myself a little bit more room
I'm going to bring everything over to the left hand side. So this is going to give me x squared minus 4x minus 6 is equal to 0. Just bringing it over. Subtracting out 8 from 4 gives me negative 4. Bringing over the 6 gives me negative 6. I'm going to pull out my GCF now. In this case, I can pull out 2 because I see it there. x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Can that be factored? Absolutely. We're going to get 2 minus 3 plus 1. My answer is going to give me 3 comma negative 1. That will be cloudsies. Cloudsies. It's a really good problem to know how to do. It's a really good problem. Um, because it's a variable term. If it was just a um, yeah, it's it's being added, not multiplied. So we take the, that's a good way to explain it. Yeah, it's a variable term. I see what you mean by that. Like, oh, it's just missing a plus two, so let me just add two to it. Can't really do that. Um, another way to look at that type of problem is is what you're kind of getting at is let's say five um, in three, and this would be like seven in two. Right? It's not as simple as just adding two here to say that they're the same, right? So we, we can't really do it that way. It's, we have to be able to multiply the two terms together. So good question, good way. Okay. Next one on the side is what we want to be able to see here is solving this out using square terms. So I'm going to go ahead. I need to deal with that square root by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract out 2x from both sides. This is going to give me the square root of x plus 1 is equal to negative 2x plus 8. How do I get rid of a square root term? Square it to both sides. So this is going to kind of look funky, but we should be able to do it. We're going to get x plus 1 on the left side now to get rid of that square root. On the right hand side, we got a FOIL. When we FOIL, I'm going to do it for you, we are going to get 4x squared minus, see, 16 and 16, 32. Just doing the four first. Is equal to 64 plus 64, uh, 4. That is our foiled out. I'm going to move everything to one side so I can reduce down. When we reduce down, it's going to give me 0 is equal to 4x squared minus 33x minus 63. Can, can we factor that? Plus 63, I'm just kidding. Is that pretty much a really complicated problem? Okay. If I give you something like this, it will work out nicer than this. But if we had to do something like this and you got here and you're like, oh man. And I would to tell you, it's factorable, factor it. And you're like, I don't want to factor that. I don't know, six times 43, what, what would be a good way to kind of solve this? Quadratic formula. It should be good enough for you to see the terms. Like if you can, you know, when in doubt, use a quadratic formula and it'll give you good values. That is a fail safe that will work. If factoring doesn't work, use quadratic. Completing the square doesn't work, factor, you know, quadratic equation. It will always work out with the quadratic equation. So if it's like even numbers, then it'll be like, I it should, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be able to find out good values. Even if we had pull out a GCF, right? If they had a GCF, we'd be able to pull that out. but. 4 and 33 are both even and odds. We can't pull anything out from this. So. 33 is not prime, but it's 
so I'm not good on this, but it one's fine. Okay, so use quadratic. I'm just going to leave it there. Should be good. Okay, here we go. Let's keep on going with this. I'm going to take you guys to the belt today, and I apologize for that, but I just want to, like, you guys have no homework besides studying, so I hardly doubt maybe half of you study. Just being realistic. Being realistic. And I hope you guys start too. You do have a mixture problem. I'm telling you right now, you have one. Okay, and I rechanged it and I made sure that they work. I actually solved them out before I put them in there to make sure that they're kind of good. Now, depending on what I give you, depends on how you want to set up the equation. We have two different ways, right? We can either give two solutions in which we add, them, add up the final solution, or if I give you the final solution and one solution, I give you the final and I give you one part of the solution to subtract them. So it depends on what I give you, okay? This one is just a practice problem. We have the three different styles, which is the chemical reaction. You're mixing alcohol solution with another alcohol solution to dilute it. You can also be giving chemicals, which is the, uh, no, uh, metals, which is the alloys of nickel plus another part of nickel makes you a nickel alloy or something. The other one is this type of problem where we're mixing fruit juices to your delicious heavy sugar corn syrup drinks that you guys love to drink, that I used to love to drink too. Hawaiian Punch Forever, man. Hawaiian Punch Forever. Delicious. Not racking on it, still, still respect. Still respect. Just can't have any more of it. I just miss milk, I'll be honest. I just miss milk. I haven't had milk in like four months. Struggle's real. Because I'm on a diet. Mm -hmm. Don't know. It's not good for you, it's just high in fats. I used to go through a gallon of milk like every two days. Just by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I love milk. Milk with ice? Oh, delicious. Delicious. Delicious, right? Oh, so good. So good. Oh, no, it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> okay, yeah, you got to do that. But you just if you just drink it, it's so cold, it hits your teeth. Oh, it's the best. Do you hate that feeling? I love that feeling. The cold, of, that's like going to the Rite Aids. If you ever go to Rite Aids and you go to like their ice cream aisle and you, they have the coldest water ever. Try it next time. Get my fave, go in and get the rainbow sherbet. And, oh, it's deli are you kidding me? Rainbow sherbet is delicious. Okay. For our first one here, we want to be able to set up the equation. I am going to look for the equation for you guys. Okay. Part of your work is being able to show that. The first one we want to be able to see here is 58. X is one solution, plus the other solution, which is telling us that 38% of it at two gallons or two liters will be mixed with our final solution at 50. Okay. Are we adding or subtracting? Adding. Got to be able to add. If we're given two of them, we got to be able to add for our two equations. Okay. Solving this out and showing all my work for this. I'm going to kind of do this in all one fellow swoop. 0.58x plus, what is that, 0.46 or no? 70. What is it? 76. I'm just kidding. Just making sure you guys are paying attention. 0 0.50 times x plus 2. We should get 0.58x plus 0.76 is equal to 0.5. 0x plus 1. Subtract it on both sides. My x is bringing everything over to this side. It just takes time to fill that, that boy in. Um, it should give us 0 0.08 is equal to 0.24. Which look at how nice that comes out. X is equal to 3. This tells me I need 3 liter solution at a concentration of 58% fruit juice. It can be mixed with a 38% at two liters to give me a 50% combination. Good stuff. Good stuff in your life, man. Good stuff in your life. Okay. Cool beans? Cool beans. Okay. You do have a word problem. You do have a word problem with this. Okay. Don't, don't pack up yet. I'm taking you to the bell. The more problems we can get through, the better. 
1.7 inequalities. So we still got like 10 minutes. I can still do like three more sections. I got you. I got you. There's a reason why we're doing it. And we don't need to do the one to the right because it's the same problem. I made a boo-boo. Made a boo-boo. No, the second half of this will be posted online today. I'm going to make it during my sixth period for you, which will review the last. We will have tests. We will have problems from the first test in here as well. Yeah, yeah. Got to review those too. There's a couple of those. There's a couple. Of, not all of them. Just a couple of them. For this type of problem, the first thing we want to be able to do is solve out for my x value. Keeping the variable on the left-hand side. For inequalities, the variable on the left-hand side works for us even better. Looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and subtract out 5 from both sides. Does subtracting 5 change the symbol? No, it does not. What happens when we divide out? It changes the symbol. Only if it's negative. Multiplying or dividing by a negative value changes the symbol. Would have been fine. So x is greater than 7. Open or close circle at 7. Close, going to the left or right. Right. In this case, because it's not a compound inequality, the direction of the arrow points in the direction that you're going to be putting your sign in. That helps you out. Here we go. Let's try another problem out. Sorry, I'm trying to get through more with you guys. As you can tell, we're only at nine, not through the rest of these ones. But we're going to, again, I'm going to keep you to the bell. Whatever you don't finish will be posted on School of Today. The remaining problems will be posted. It would be really good to go over. Really good to go over. Really good to go over. Okay. This is another term that we're also going to see here. This is, um, if you guys can put this down below too, this is quadratic. Inequalities. So I'm pointing the hell to that because I'm lazy. Quadratic inequalities also involve us that we need to factor it out and kind of determine what the values provide us. Looking at this first, I want to be able to bring everything to one side. So it should give me x squared minus 5x plus 6. We did no multiplication at all or division by negative, so it stays the same. From here, we got to be able to factor it. Can we factor that bad boy? What would it give us? X would be plus minus 2 minus 3 less than 0. From this point, we want to be able to see how the structure is being made. This will tell you whether you have a compounded or uh, close, connected or not connected. Do we have connected or not connected? This is connected. What would be my solutions to this? X plus two, X plus three. So I'm gonna go to my number line at two, close circle, at three, close circle, connected, not connected? Connected. Here we go. Next type of problems we're going to see here, inequality, com uh, inequality types. Mess up on me now. Come on, man. Looking at the absolute value inequalities, the first thing I want to be able to get rid of is the 8 on this side. I want to get to that inequality first. Inequality acts like parentheses, so we got to do everything on the outside first. 
I still keep that negative. It's going to be negative 2. What should I do with that negative? Divide it. What happens when I divide by a negative? Switches the signs. So this is going to be crucial right here. When we change that, this is where we want to be able to look and see how our inequality will change. Everything outside of it, it just brought us up to this moment. Now we got to convert the equivalency for the inequality. Because it is less than symbol, we know it's going to be negative 2 is less than 2x minus 1, which is less than 2. Will it be connected or not connected? Connected. Solving this out, and I know it's kind of wompy, but I'm going to do this fairly fast because we got more of these to do. Um, subtracting out 1 should have got me negative 3. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, yeah, I added it. Negative 1, 3. And then dividing out by both sides, we are going to get negative 1 half is less than x, which is less than 3 over 2. And again, I will give you better numbers that are whole numbers. Okay. For these ones here, open or close circle. Close at negative a half. Close at 1 and a half. And they'll be connected. Okay. But what our original problem looked like, it wasn't going to be connected. It actually was connected because we want to be able to look at when the inequality is equivalent. Okay, look at when the equivalent, uh, equivalency is changed. Okay, good? Okay. Come on. Circles. I think this might be the last one we're going to do together. The remaining problems for both uh, circles, I think we have one more circle, two more linear problems, and then the review from the chapter one test, the types of questions we'll be posting today. This PowerPoint as well will be posted with you guys. So if you want to look over those problems and do them yourselves before you guys get to the video, by all means, please do that. Test is on Thursday. Tomorrow, team test. Hold on. Friday, Friday, right? That puts you to Friday. So your test is Friday. Team test, Thursday review. Okay. I'll finish these up with you guys. You guys have a good day, guys.